There is no known cure for the yips, and I'm not a psychologist or anything like that, but here's step by step how I overcame the yips and performance anxiety. And while I'm speaking specifically of baseball here, I believe this can be applied to any sports and anyone who struggles with performance anxiety. Now, I'm gonna call this the rack method because I've literally never heard anyone say this before. Okay, I had just gotten signed. It's my very first game with the Nationals. Everyone's watching me play for the first time, and I'm at third base. Now, in the back of my head, I had a very specific worry. I was worried that a ball would get hit to me and I would overthrow our first baseman. Now, the reason that I was worried about this specifically was because of something that happened in college, but I'll get to that in a minute. So I'm in my first ever pro game, and sure enough, one of the first batters hits me a ball probably 100 plus miles per hour off the bat. I feel the ball relatively cleanly, but as I'm about to throw, I feel myself tense up, and sure enough, I throw the ball way over our first baseman's head. And keep in mind, he's like six foot six. That sucked. I literally had made that throw so many times in practice. Now, here I am in my first game, and I'm tensing up as I'm throwing to first base. This happened in my first ever professional game, and to say I'm embarrassed would be an understatement. While this happened in my first pro game, this actually started for me back in college. Now, bear with me here. If this is something you struggle with, this is all important. So rewind to my sophomore year of college. So I played mostly second base and shortstop, but our shortstop at the time, Connor Costeca, was a total stud, and so defensively, they just kept me at second base. While I was a second baseman, I had about a 91 mile an hour arm across the diamond. So right before the season started, I went from playing second base, they moved me to third base, and that's where I played for opening day. I had done totally Totally fine in practice, I had plenty of arm strength, they put me at third base, the game starts, and one of the first batters hits the ball to me, and I happen to sail the throw over the first baseman. Now at the time I didn't think much of it, and I was like, oh, oh well, it happens, people make errors, it is what it is. But later on in the game, another ball gets hit to me and I felt myself tense up a little bit on that throw and that's where it all began. I ended up overthrowing that ball and that was my second error of the game, but later in the game, I proceeded to throw it over his head again for a third time that game. And at that point, I was like, okay, something is wrong in my head. I cannot make this throw. After that game, I was moved to second base and I never played there again. That is, until I'm in Palm Beach, Florida with the Nationals. I had just gotten signed, this video had just gone viral and there was all kinds of noise on social media for people ready to see how I perform. Now, get this, the infield coordinator at the time, Jeff Carver, comes up to me and is like, hey man, I know you've been playing second base, a little bit of shortstop. Uh, is it cool with you if we move you to third base? And I, of course, responded, yeah, of course, I'll play third base. Like the most common advice I received going into pro ball is if someone asks you if you play a position, the answer is always yes, absolutely, I play that position. Now, as I said yes to Jeff's question about if I play third base, I already felt a little spike in my anxiety and I was a little bit worried that uh, I really hope that I don't still deal with this mental block. Now, I just told myself, okay, that was years ago, it is what it is, I just tucked it away in the back of my brain and just tried not to think about it. So I practiced at third base for a few weeks before I'm activated and everything seemed to be going decent enough. I've never been the best defender on the field, but I felt like I was learning the position, I felt like I was doing fine in practice. So that brings us to game one, and this is where our story began. The ball's hit to me and I throw it away again, I sail our first baseman. So now in my head I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm supposed to be a professional, I can't just be throwing the ball away. Granted, it's only one time, but in my head I knew if they hit another ball, to me, it's probably going to be thrown away again. That was like my worst fear. I had all these thoughts going through my head. Ah, what are my coaches gonna think of me? Ah, I bet my teammates are thinking, where'd they find this guy? How'd this guy get signed? I know the GM's in the stands and I'm imagining him thinking, man, this guy's never gonna make it anywhere. Now through all this, I tried to stay positive. Now I had already tried the methods of affirming myself and telling myself I'm a great player, imagining myself making the perfect throw, and none of this helped at all. Nothing helped. It was like this giant block in my head and I absolutely couldn't get on the other side of it. It was like if the ball was hit to me, I couldn't trust my own ability to just do what I do in practice so easily. So luckily for me, that was the only ball hit to me that game. And I hit an opposite field double that game, so at least at the plate I did well. And so overall I was like, oh, we'll just worry about this later. But I knew at some point I was gonna have to face that mental block again. So I get back to my hotel and I literally Googled how to overcome the yips in baseball. Now I had Googled this several times before, but this time I was gonna do a little bit more research. I was gonna figure it out. And what I found was literally nothing helpful. I found people saying, oh, you have to have a routine every time to build up your confidence. You have to affirm yourself. You have to play with freedom. You have to throw the ball free. And these are all things that I knew, but it didn't stop me from just tensing up as I was about to throw the ball. Nothing I looked for actually helped. I knew it wasn't some physical adjustment that needed to be made. I knew it was a mental adjustment, but I just couldn't break past that barrier. When you have the yips, it's like your body is paralyzed for a split second, and there's nothing you can do about it. 
one of the first articles that came up on Google says, there is no proven method that cures the yips. That is not at all what I wanted to read. But believe it or not, later that very same day, I found the answer that I was looking for. And I found it in a pretty unorthodox way. So I was at a Bible study and I'm telling the group leader about my error that I made earlier that day. I told him about what had happened in college. I told him about the error I made earlier that day. And I told him I couldn't figure out how to overcome it. And I kid you not, this guy immediately, no hesitation says, I know what your problem is. He was like, I know exactly what your problem is. And I'm like, okay, sure you do. Like, go ahead, tell me, what do I need to change? I didn't say it like that, but that's what I was thinking. He told me this, if there was no one there on the field and it was just you, you would make that throw 99 times out of 100. But as soon as people are there, you get scared. He said, you have a fear of man. You are idolizing the opinions of the people around you. And that's what you're crippled by. You are so worried that you're gonna screw up because you're worried about what other people think of you. He said, you have fear of man. Now, I knew he was absolutely right about the root cause. That was the root cause. I was scared of what other people thought of me, but I still didn't know how to fix it from that. But that got me thinking, if fear is the root cause, then how do I overcome fear? And I started to realize that a lot of it is the fear of the unknown, the fear of what the coaches are thinking of me. I'm scared of what their perceptions are, but there's a lot of unknown. And so I realized that all of my previous methods of dealing with it, of affirming myself positively and imagining myself making the perfect throw and just forgetting about my previous errors. All of that was me avoiding the thing that was making me fearful. I was avoiding my fear of failing. I was running from it and that was just making the problem worse. So against all sports psychology recommendations that I had previously heard, I decided to do something that most people would not recommend. And the reason I did this is because I had literally nothing to lose. I had tried everything else. So rather than affirming myself and saying, I can do it, I can make this throw and picturing myself making the good throw, I went straight for my fear. I basically watched a replay in my head of everything I was afraid of. I pictured myself throwing the ball away. I pictured my coach thinking, wow, this guy sucks. I'm never gonna put him in third base. I pictured my teammates thinking, man, this guy cannot play, he's on his way out. I pictured the pain that I was afraid of and I explored my fear entirely. Every single thing I could possibly be afraid of, I explored it. I got to the point where I was kinda numb to it. I just kept picturing myself failing over and over again and everything I was possibly scared of and there was no longer anything that was unknown to me. I knew exactly what I was afraid of. So I pictured the worst and I became okay with the worst. So not only did I explore my fears and see head on every single thing that I was afraid of, I then affirmed myself. After picturing all of those failures, I pictured myself throwing the ball away. I then pictured my mom and I pictured my dad and how they wouldn't see me any differently no matter how many errors I made. I pictured the God who created me not seeing me any differently just because I made some error. I knew that they would still love me regardless of how many errors that I made. I had to detach my personal identity from my identity on the field. And the way I was able to detach is by facing my fears head on and eliminating my fear of man and what other people thought of me. I pictured all the fears in detail. There was no ambiguity. I knew exactly what I was afraid of. And I also pictured all of the people that loved me the same regardless of how many errors I made. I basically became okay with failing. Just a few days later, I'm playing in a game against the Cardinals. And once again, I'm at third base. As the game was starting, I repeated in my head the words, I fear you alone, talking to God. Reminding myself that I didn't fear the opinions of other people. I could throw the ball away again, and it was fine. I reminded myself that I didn't fear how other people perceived me. It was okay if I made an error. I kid you not, the first batter of the game hits me the ball. He was a fast runner, he was a leadoff hitter, and I'll never forget. I fielded the ball cleanly, picked up my target, and it was like it was moving in slow motion. I reared back, threw an absolute bullet across the diamond right at my first baseman's chest. Now you would think I felt so relieved after finally making a good throw from third base, but to be honest with you, I wasn't even that relieved. Even if I had thrown that ball away, I would have been perfectly okay with it. And that's because baseball wasn't who I was. My performance on the field wasn't who I am. You have to remember, baseball isn't who you are. It's just a thing that you do.